Ever wondered what really sets the AIS and GIS panel apart from each other in medium voltage switchgear? In this video, we are going to break down the key differences between the AIS panel and GIS panel step by step using the 3D models. And in the end, we will also talk about what are the different scenarios in which we need AIS panel and GIS panel. Okay, so let us first start by understanding what are some of the key differences, key design differences that you can notice in both AIS and GIS panel. So what you can see, this is the 3D model of uh, the GIS panel. And here we have the 3D model of AIS panel. Both of this model are publicly available. So I'll put link for uh, both this model down in the description. You can go and check it out after this video. So the first noticeable difference that you will see is that when we use GIS panel, we need to have a dedicated tank because we are using an insulating gas like for example SF6 to provide us the insulation and that gas of course we cannot put just inside this panel. We need to provide a dedicated tank and inside that tank we will feel the gas at certain pressure. And this tank will mostly have all the switching components. Now, what are the different switching components that we use in the panel? Of course, one, it is circuit breaker. And second one is it is a disconnector. So if I show you inside the panel, you can see we have circuit breaker uh, interrupters here, vacuum interrupter R, Y and B. And then here you can also see the switching device, which is the disconnector, three position disconnector. So for GIS, we definitely need to have this tank. So without this tank, uh, it, it cannot be a GIS panel, right? But if you look at the AIS panel, now this is the AIS panel and you notice here, the circuit breaker is not inside any of the tank or the disconnector is not inside any of the tank, right? Everything is insulated by the atmospheric air and hence this is the air insulated panel. So one of the major difference that you will notice is for GIS, we need a tank and for AIS, we do not need any sort of tank. You can simply put the equipment inside the panel and use the sufficient clearances to provide the dielectric strength that we need. The second difference is that now since we are providing a, a tank which is you know pressurized with SF6 gas or any other insulating gas, we definitely need to monitor uh, the pressure inside the tank because the dielectric strength inside the tank is directly proportional to the pressure of the insulating gas for example SF6 if the pressure decreases the dielectric properties or the dielectric strength of the tank will reduce and that can cause a problem because in case fault occurs in that scenario and the circuit breaker contacts tries to open there is a high possibility that the circuit breaker will not be able to clear the fault or uh, maybe uh, there can be insulation problems. So for sure, we must monitor the gas density inside the tank. And for that, you can see we have provided here the density monitor. So this small, small parts, what you can see are the density monitor. So where it is? Yeah, here you can see these are the density monitor. Now it depends how many compartments you're providing inside the tank. If there are two separate compartments, then you need to provide two different density monitors. Now what they will do is, they will inform us or they will indicate what is the pressure inside the tank. Is it in the safe condition or is it in the alarming condition? And that is very, very crucial in case of GIS monitoring of the gas uh, inside the tank. But if you look at the AIS panel, we are not using any sort of insulation gas, right? Even if the breaker is vacuum breaker, then for sure we don't need any monitoring system, pressure monitoring system in case of AIS. Whatever insulation is provided is with the help of the atmospheric air. So for sure, in case of AIS, we do not need any sort of pressure monitoring system. But as I mentioned, if it is a GIS panel and we are using any sort of insulating gas, then the pressure monitoring system is very, very important. And there is one more another important thing and that is subscribing to the channel because yeah, that's how you will be getting the updates of uh, the next videos because there is a lot of content coming. There is a lot of content available on Switchgear. You can subscribe to the channel and watch everything that is available. And soon we are also reaching 200,000 subscribers. So help us reaching there quickly. Thank you so much in advance for that. So that is the second noticeable difference. Now the third difference that you will notice now for that maybe you have to open the panel and that is since we are providing a tank 
Now it is completely sealed with the gas, but let's say in case something goes wrong inside the tank and there is very high pressure that is getting developed inside the tank. Now we must provide some sort of pressure relief arrangement in that scenario because if we don't, then maybe the tank will burst and it will cause a lot of damage to the nearby panels and the different equipment that we are using inside the panel. So definitely we must provide some sort of pressure relief arrangement uh, when we are using a sealed tank, a pressurized sealed tank. So you see at the back end, back end side of this uh, tank, this round part is basically the pressure relief arrangement. Now you can notice this uh, if you have access to the tank, but just make sure the supply is off and everything is safe to check. So that arrangement we must provide in case of a GIS panel. But AIS panel, are we using any pressurized gas or any pressurized air? Well, of course, the answer is no. So in this scenario, for sure, we do not need any sort of pressure relief device as well. That is completely free from that. So that is uh, one of the differences that you will notice in this panel. Also, the next noticeable difference is that you see the bus bars that we have in the GIS panel, they are insulated. Mostly, uh, you will find a GIS panel which will have, you know, insulated bus bar with some insulating material. And that also makes these uh, panels compact compared to the AIS uh, switchgear or AIS panel. But if you look at the AIS panel, you see there is no insulation. It's simply the copper bars that is running from the panel. And mostly, uh, we do not provide any sort of insulation. But there is a possibility, the option is available if needed if asked by the customer then we can surely provide some insulating material on the bus bar but then again uh, the cost of the panel will increase to a very high level and one of the major reason why we use AIS panel because they are cheap and if you are putting a lot of insulation then for sure uh, the cost of the panel will go high and the purpose of using AIS panel may not be achieved so that point we must consider and that is the reason why you will find mostly uh, the bus bar in, inside the AIS panels are not insulated. However, in case of GIS, you can see it is clearly insulated by some insulating material. Now we saw GIS is having a tank in which we are putting all the switching components. The bus bar of that is, um, you know, uh, very insulated, which makes it very, very compact. Since we are using SF6 gas instead of air, uh, the dielectric properties of SF6 is far, far better when we compare it with air. The overall footprint of this panel becomes very, very compact. Almost 75% reduction in the space uh, when we compare it with the equivalent AIS panel. So there is a huge space saving that you can achieve with the help of a GIS panel. AIS panel for sure, uh, it, it needs more space because what we are using as an insulating medium is nothing but the air and air, the dielectric property of air is not as good as the SF6 gas or any other insulating gas. So for sure, we must provide sufficient distance to achieve the required dielectric strength in the panel. If you don't, then for sure there will be faults uh, happening and we don't want that for sure. So uh, definitely no doubt uh, the AIS panel, the footprint of AIS panel is very large when we compare it with the its equivalent GIS panel. That is again one of the major noticeable difference and one of the major factor why people go with the GIS panels. Now talking about the next difference is that the AIS panel can have a withdrawable type components. That means you can put the component inside the panel and whenever needed you can remove that component from the panel without disturbing the whole panel. The example of that is this withdrawable type circuit breaker. This circuit breaker can be removed from the panel in case of maintenance or any, any other uh, requirement. This is possible in case of AIS panel. That advantage is only available in case of AIS panel. If you go to the GIS panel, now since everything is tank, you cannot remove any of the component, right? Because it's not possible and you simply cannot remove that. So that flexibility is completely missing in case of AIS, uh, GIS panel. That is only available when we are using a uh, AIS panel. Now let us talk about some of the pros and cons of uh, both this panel. Starting with the GIS panel, for sure GIS panel, since everything is insulated with a very strong insulating gas, your bus bars are almost covered with the insulating material. 
these panels are very very safer compared to the AIS panel. Now I want you to understand this very clearly that doesn't mean that AIS panels are not safe. Both these panels are very good in what they are doing the purpose is same but since we are comparing these two things then for sure in safety uh, GIS will score more marks. Also the another advantage that we get with the GIS panel is that since everything is insulated everything is sealed uh, it is almost equivalent to no maintenance required. There are very rare scenarios in which you may need to carry out the maintenance but generally uh, the maintenance of these panels are very very less. But in case of AIS panel that is not the case. AIS might ask for regular maintenance because since this is air insulated there is possibility that inside the panel there will be dust, dirt going. So we, we need to carry out regular maintenance on this. So that is in case of maintenance uh, again GIS will score more marks. But one of the problem that GIS panels will face now as I mentioned of course there is very less scenarios that you may need to carry out the maintenance. But sometimes if something goes wrong with this tank or inside the tank then it is a big headache then because you cannot do anything on the side then you have to take the complete shutdown and replace everything and it, it's a time consuming process. So in case something goes wrong with the uh, GIS panel then there is a lot of trouble but that is not the case with AIS panel it is uh, very flexible and can be fixed very quickly. Now we talked about a lot of advantages that GIS offers and as a result this advantage will not come as it is. Of course it will have its own additional cost and which makes the GI switchgear is one of the expensive option available out there. So if budget is the constraint then going with GIS might not be a good choice. GIS pa AIS panel on the other hand are the most cost effective solution available in the market right now. And that is no surprise uh, that is the reason why most of the people most of the utility uh, still prefer to have the AIS panel over GIS panel. Now one more problem uh, with the GIS and that can make the GIS uh, expensive is that in case uh, if demanded by the customer then the GIS may need to have additional disconnector at the cable side. Now generally you will see uh, the tanks will have the disconnector at the bus bar side but if customer demands that he wants to have the disconnector also at the cable side uh, then of course you need to change the design. So the tank that we saw in the 3D model will only have one disconnector which is at the bus bar side. For this additional disconnector we may need to provide one more tank so there will be gas so there will be additional density monitor for that as well. So that is the additional things that we need to provide in case of a GIS if required if asked by the customer. So this is for sure will add to another cost. But in case of AIS panel and if we are using the withdrawable type circuit breaker then uh, we need not to provide this additional disconnector because when you remove the circuit breaker from the panel it basically providing you an isolating distance right. So in that scenario we don't have we don't need to provide the additional disconnector but since the GIS it's it's sealed and you cannot remove that breaker from GIS this additional disconnector is required in case of AIS. If withdrawable circuit breaker is used then for sure we don't need to provide this disconnector that is one of the advantage that is one of the flexibility uh, provided by the AIS panel which is for sure absent in case of GIS panel. Now let us discuss about the different use cases of the AIS and GIS panel starting with of course the AIS panel. So the AIS panel are the most cheapest option available or the most cost effective option available cheapest is not the right word for sure. So the most cost effective solution available for switchgear. Now I want you to understand both this panel whether it is AIS or GIS they serve the same purpose very well. The only difference is what technology we are using that is making the difference. So where the space is not limitation I have ample amount of space uh, in my industry in my substation and the site is under not very heavy pollution the AIS is still the best choice and also the cost effective choice. It also has some of the flexibility which we discussed which is completely absent in case of GIS panel. In such scenario most of the time AIS panels are preferred. Clear? Now moving on to the GIS panel. 
Now, GIS mm -hmm. panel, they certainly have certain advantages like uh, they are maintenance free, they are very, very compact. So where the space is limited, I have an industry in, let's say, a very posh area or uh, the area where land rates are very high and I don't want to invest a good amount of space for these panels. So maybe going with the GIS panel is a good choice for me because I can accommodate uh, a lot of panels in a compact room without uh, any issue. Or if the site is under very heavy pollution, like let's say cement industries where pollution is a day-to-day -day activity. So in that case, GIS could be a better choice because it's sealed and the inside component of the tank is not affected mostly by the pollution. And if you are somebody who is who don't want to invest a lot of money inside uh, the maintenance activity, uh, then in that scenario, GIS panels can be the best choice. So those are some of the scenarios where AIS and GIS panels can be used. So let us summarize what we discussed so far about the AIS and GIS panel. So we started first with the tank requirement. We saw we don't need any sort of tank in case of AIS panel, but we do need uh, to have some tank for a GIS. Pressure monitoring system for sure. Whenever we are using some insulating gases, we need to have that. So GIS will need it. AIS do not. Pressure relief device is also required when we are using some gas not required for AIS. Bus bar insulation can be provided in, in case of AIS, but mostly you will find they are not provided. But GIS mostly it is provided and the bus bars are insulated. Compactness, GIS, AIS is less compact compared to the GIS. Withdrawable type circuit breaker facility is available only in case of GIS. That flexibility is not available for GIS case. When we talk about safety, GIS is much more safer. Uh, AIS, the safety is standard. Maintenance required needs regular maintenance in case of AIS. GIS, it's very, very less maintenance or minimal maintenance. But in case something goes wrong with the tank, but then that's a big headache. Cost-wise, GIS is most cost-efficient solution and it is less expens expensive. GIS is for sure, uh, it's the most expensive option available. Additional disconnector, uh, in case of GIS, it is not required if we are using withdrawable type circuit breaker. Uh, but for GIS, we definitely need to provide a dedicated disconnector in case if it is demanded by the customer. So that is the summary of AIS versus GIS panel. You can definitely take the screenshot of uh, uh, this screen for your quick reference and for your quick understanding between AIS and GIS panel. So that's all for this video, guys. I hope you have understood clearly what is the difference between AIS and GIS panel. If you found this video helpful, then do like this video and do comment helpful in the comment section below. And also, if you haven't subscribed the channel yet, do subscribe because we are very near to reaching 200,000 subscribers and your subscribe uh, will matter to that as well. So thank you so much for that in adv advance. And I'll be seeing you in my next video with another interesting topic. But till then, keep watching. Keep learning.